pediatric speech language pathologist and welcome to teachmetotalk.com's therapy tip of the week. Several weeks ago my podcast was about teaching late talking toddlers to use sign language to begin to communicate and it is a fabulous strategy and if you want a really detailed explanation of why signs work, when a kid is re developmentally ready to sign and all of that kind of background information go back and watch that show. Again, it's podcast number 383, and you can find it right there on YouTube, or if you're listening on iTunes or Blog Talk Radio, you can find it there. I received some emails from some parents after that podcast saying, I really didn't get exactly how to teach my child to sign. So that's what I wanna do in this therapy tip of the week is teach you exactly how to do it. Now, I use the cues tell him, show him, and help him to teach a child anything that I want to do. So with sign language, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to tell him the sign that we're using. So let's say that we're teaching a child to sign milk, which I like to think about it like I am milking the cow. So we're teaching the child to sign milk. So I would say, I would have his sippy cup right here, and I would say, you want some milk? You want some milk? So I'm saying the word as I'm signing it. I'm telling him, and then I'm showing him. I'm saying, look it's milk you want your milk i'm helping him link the sign and again i'm pretending i'm holding the cup here his sippy cup and the sign milk and i'm doing it together so he can link it so i've told him i've shown him and what do we do next we help him so then what you want to do is take his little hand and i usually do it you know with either either one that either hand just take his little hand and help him sign milk and as soon as you feel like he has not resisted <laughs> and made enough of an effort, then you immediately give him the milk and you cheer and act excited. But again, he's gotten the natural consequence. He, or the reward, he's gotten the milk that he's wanted. So that's how we do it. We tell him, show him and help him. And we're careful to pick the right motivators, meaning that he wants what it is that we are trying to get him to sign for. All right, so that's the short version of that. And again, if you want to hear the longer explanation, go back and listen to that show. On that show, I also talked about the prerequisites for signing. And that means, what does the kid have to be doing developmentally before signing is realistic for him? And let me just review these. First of all, that he's socially connected. So he's got to watch you. If he's running around the room and has no idea that you're over there signing cracker, He's not ready. You got to get him socially connected to you first. He also needs to be beginning to understand words. So if you're teaching cracker, he has to know what a cracker is. And when you're saying, do you want a cracker? He has to, again, have associated that word. And now he's got to associate the sign. So we need to see some receptive language developing. A child before he also, uh, the third prerequisite before he also is ready to developmentally learn to use signs is he has to have communicative intent. What does that mean? He knows that he has to do something to get something. So children might whine, they might reach for something, they might try to pull you there. And so that's how we measure communicative intent. He understands that you are the giver of good things and if he gets you to do it for him, it'll be easier for him to uh, accomplish whatever it is that he wants. So again, that communicative intent piece is really, really, really important. And lots of times that really is piggybacked with picking the right motivators. If you pick something that he loves and that he's willing to work for, he's much more likely to do the sign. The last prerequisite that we want a kid being able to do before we know that signing is realistic is that he has to perform easier, earlier gestures. So he has to do something like clap, waving bye-bye, giving five, shaking his head no, things like that. It is completely unrealistic to teach a child to use sign language until he's using some other uh, gestures, and that would be using them either in imitation pretty consistently or preferably on his own. So that those are the problems that therapists and parents report that, that when they haven't been able to successfully get a child to sign, it's usually because they haven't met the child hasn't met those prerequisites or the parent hasn't picked enough motivators or done some of the other little no-nos <laughs> that I reviewed in another therapy tip of the week called, excuse me, tips for teaching toddlers to sign. So go back and watch that one if you need those tips. All right, so here's what we want to do today. We are going to 
review or I'm going to show you the signs that I use most often in uh, my own private practice with uh, toddlers who were coming to me for speech therapy. Now, I still begin with all-purpose requesting signs. So what does that mean? That means a, a sign that they can use to get lots of different things. Now, this is a tad controversial in our field because some therapists believe that children then uh, overgeneralize and kind of get stuck on those signs. And really, I don't think that's the kid's fault. That's the adult's fault because we are not teaching them new signs to replace these generalized all-purpose requesting signs. And so I start with signs like more and eat and please or, or sometimes drink. If I've taught eat and drink, I don't teach those too closely together because they're so similar but I like teaching those signs but then it's up to me and up to you as a child's parent or therapist to move them along so we just get it going with these all-purpose signs and then we worry about teaching things more specifically so this first little group of signs I already showed you more and so again you're going to use tell him show him help him to get him to sign more you're going to pick something he really really wants and then you're going to teach him that little sign um, then I already told you eat, so that would be for any kind of food. So you're just putting your fingers to your mouth for eat. Please is another good one. That's an all-purpose requesting sign. You'll just rub your chest. Other ones that I teach first are super, super common with kids, and they seem to learn them really easily. I like to teach milk because that's what uh, toddlers and babies are usually drinking. I like to teach all done. Now, if a child is, is shaking his head no, I'll probably stick with that one and not teach all done because I have another way to refuse. But I like that sign, and it, it looks different than some of the other ones. Uh, that we're teaching now a lot of therapists will do all done different ways and it doesn't matter if you've already started teaching a child one way don't feel like you have to go and switch it to another way the important thing is that the child can do the sign and that you can recognize the sign so uh, that and again we're not trying to teach kids to be proficient American Sign Language users, this is a bridge. This is a tool to help them learn how to communicate and to be symbolic, that they can link the sign with the word it is that they're trying to say. All right, um, go is another one that I teach. Now, the ASL version for that is that you're pointing. I don't teach it that way with toddlers. If you want to do that, you can. But I like to roll my hands to teach go. And again, it might look like wheels on the bus or it might look like in patty cake you know you're rolling them up rolling them up and throwing them in the pan but I teach it for go and it's pretty successful another one that I teach pretty early is help for assistance now many toddlers won't be able to do that actually in my 26 year career I don't know that I've had anybody <laughs> be able to really do that sign completely correctly but anything that they're doing where they're raising their little hands or something that that hand is going up and you know that they need a, the, that assistance that's going to be fine and remember too as the adult you set the precedence for that so you are showing them the sign and you're seeing their approximation right after they do it so you need to remember what it is you can get it closer if you want to but again remember this is just a bridge this is just temporary so those were the first signs oh and i also do open because you can use that as a requesting word when you when a child is opening anything a toy box that he can't open i put all of my toys for therapy in ziploc bags so that a child has to request using a couple of different signs and we're really increasing those opportunities for him to sign so open is a great one some moms and therapists do open this way and again we've already talked about you don't have to be so picky about that just pick a way to do it so those were my all-purpose signs. More, eat, milk, all done, please go open and help. So you've got eight signs already. Let's move on to something a little bit more specifically. And remember I told you that I like using snacks. So let's talk about some snack words or some junk food words that toddlers might use. Cookie is a good one. So basically you're just pretending like you're making a cookie in your hand, like with a cookie cutter. I've already shown you cracker. So you're tapping your elbow. Fish for goldfish is what I use. So think about a fish swimming and just shake your hand like the fish is swimming through the water. 
candy is a good one and some parents will use this sign for a word like treat and it's october now if you're watching this as a new therapy tip of the week candy or treat is very popular in the month of october as we get ready to help children learn how to trick or treat uh, and something for a drink so you could either do drink here you might do water if a child really likes a lot of water we already talked about milk but another one that i sometimes do is juice now it's supposed to be a j in the air with your pinky finger but again toddlers really have difficulty with that from a motor coordination perspective so any kind of thing that they're doing in the air with their index finger I think is a perfect approximation for juice. So your child may have some different foods that he likes. And so if that happens and you think, oh, he loves yogurt, let me, what can I do for yogurt? Look it up, Google the sign for yogurt, and then come up with your own approximation of what you think your child can do based on, again, his or her motor coordination. All right, next let's move. So we already had eight. So now we're up to 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You're up to about 16 different signs next. Let's move on to favorite activities. So these would be really common signs that we can use with toys or activities. Now, let me just say, I told you already that I like to use movement activities or food when working with toddlers because those are big motivators for kids and they'll usually work for you to flip them around or help them jump or bounce them or something like that, some kind of, throw them in the air, some kind of movement activity. And then the next one would be food. And then after they're really going along with that, then I'll introduce some signs for toys. Some therapists feel like you can do that from the beginning, but I honestly have a lot more luck with the movement games and with the snacks. But let's go ahead and review some signs for some common familiar toys. So Choo Choo, I just do it like I'm pulling the train horn or whistle with Choo Choo. The real sign for Choo Choo or train is uh, this, like you're doing tracks to your index finger and your middle finger and you uh, put one hand on top of another and move it back and forth. But this one is easier for toddlers and so many times as I'm modeling choo choo or woo woo we'll get the sound of the word so that one works pretty well ball is a sign here and again it's like you're making a round shape in front of your body so that's a good one especially for kids who are ball crazy and i use this a lot when we're if i've set up a little toddler basketball goal and they and i have one ball <laughs> and they really need the ball that's a good way to teach it you could also do it with a laundry basket and a ball so that you give them the you give let them sign for ball remember tell them show them help him get him to sign for ball make a big deal about throwing it in the basket then you get the ball hold the ball and have him sign it again so again that's another key is you withholding and you can't do it with a mean spirit or with a, a really kind of uh you know authoritative tone you've got to make yourself so fun and so enticing that they want to do what you're doing and you want to keep them with you so that's another key right there. Okay, book is a great one for our little friends who love to read. So you're just putting your hands together and opening the sign for book. And remember, you're gonna show a child the sign many, many times before you expect him to sign. So if he has a favorite book at night, you say, oh, it's time to read. We're gonna read, you know, Llama Llama, Red Pajama, or Red Pajamas, whatever book you're gonna read. And you know, you show him, say, it's time to read our book. Look, book, and you say, you sign, you tell me you want the book. And so you've shown him and now you need to help him. So take his little hands and help him sign book before you begin to read his favorite book. Another uh, favorite toy or activity would be bubbles. And I, the real sign for bubble is something like blowing, but I do it this way, like I'm popping bubbles. Another great one is balloon. And I play with balloons with toddlers all the time because it gives them an opportunity to move and be regulated. And it's pretty novel because um, lots of families don't have balloons around every day. So it's real fun. It's a treat when we do balloons. So I like to sign it like this. I've already shown you car or tr and truck, and I do it the same way, like you're driving and uh, manipulating the steering wheel. Airplane, I do like this, and I put my arms out like wings. The real sign for airplane is pretty complicated. Your thumb, your uh, index finger, and your, your uh, small finger, your pinky, are, you're using them like that, and some toddlers can do it, but 
Lots of kids like this sign for airplane. And you know, I don't really do it with toys. I do it in the context of me making them fly. So I'll say, do you want to play airplane? Let's play airplane. And then they pop their little arms up and then I say, yay, airplane, let's fly. And then you pick them up and fly them around the room, then set them down, catch your breath, <laughs> and then start again and say, you want to you play airplanes? Let's play planes. You want to fly? Come on, show me, show me, and then have them uh, sign that. All right, so that was plane. Baby is another great one for children who like to play baby dolls, and so many kids are interested in that, and it's such a great way to introduce pretend play and functional use of toy, toys, so baby is a good one. And then another sign I like to do is play. And again, it's, it's sort of complex because your thumb and your pinky finger are out. You know, some parents recognize this as hang loose or whatever, but play is a good one. Now, kids, you'll see them do their whole hands. As long as they have both hands up and they're doing something, you know, we accept that as play. All right, so now we're up to about 20 different signs that you've already learned right now in this one therapy tip of the week. And let me give you one more category, which is animals. Now, if you live in the city <laughs> and, and don't have any pets, this may be a non-issue for you. It's not relevant for your child. But most toddlers know these words and they see these common animals in books and in puzzles. And honestly, it's on the developmental test. And so we do wanna teach signs that are relevant and practical and functional, meaning that a child uses it. But I think most toddlers like these signs, so I do go ahead and teach these next. So your signs for dog, and that's like you're patting your thigh, like you were calling a dog, and that's the actual sign where you're snapping and then patting your thigh. Cat is you're making the cat's whiskers. Um, you can do two hands here. A lot of times I just do one hand, but a lot of our little friends like it better with two hands. Fish, we've already talked about. Now bird and duck are really similar. Bird is you're making a little beak with your uh, index finger and your thumb. Uh, but a lot of kids will do bird like this. I have a little cute little guy that I'm seeing right now. He does it like that, like he's flying. And again, these modifications are fine. Duck, same kind of thing here. You're using your whole hand for duck. And uh, cow and horse. And, you know, I live in rural Kentucky, so these are <laughs> really relevant signs around here. Cow is your thumb and your pinky and you're up here on your temple and then horse really similar like a horse's ear with your index finger and your middle finger and again right here at your temple so I sort of think about you're making ears when you're doing that and a lot of kids will do those interchangeably and that's okay because let's think about the signs the same way we think about words sometimes a child will call a horse a cow or a cow a horse and we just correct it and move on same thing with signs they're going to generalize and that's again why I don't really care uh, about that whole argument about not using those uh, really all-purpose signs because kids generalize anyway as they're learning language. I mean, every man is dada, and that's all right. And so we just, again, model the correct sign, model the correct bird, and move on. Now, let me ask, let me say this. Lots of people have asked me about teaching the signs for mama and dada. I don't teach those signs unless I think it's going to be a really long time before a child is able to say those words, but I usually have better luck getting a child to say mama and dada rather than signing, so I wanted to uh, say that as well. Some therapists teach thank you. I don't really teach that yet either, but it's a really popular sign, and they'll say if you're teaching please, you should teach thank you. I wanted to mention it, but I don't have a lot of luck with that sign until children have learned other signs first. So that's the list that I use, 25 or so first signs for babies and toddlers. And again, you may be using this as a compensation for a child who's not yet talking, or you may be ahead of the game here and you are just looking at ways to help your typically developing baby sign. Either way, signs are a great strategy for jump-starting expressive language and receptive language because kids are learning to understand what those words mean and again become symbolic. As they see you sign milk, they understand that that means milk and the word means milk too. 
So increasing that little language learning ability there. All right, I hope I've given you some different ideas. And again, if you need more information, go back and listen to podcast number 383 so that you can get the full background. Or if you're more of a reader, check out my uh, therapy manual written for therapists, but lots and lots of parents use it. It's called Teach Me to Talk the Therapy Manual. A Comprehensive Guide for Improving Receptive and Expressive Language in Toddlers. There's a section on sign language in here as well as tons of other goals or milestones and how to teach those with activities that are so fun for families and toddlers. So I hope that you'll check that out and the link is right there below in the post or you can uh, take a look yourself at my website at teachmetotalk.com. All right, that's all for today. Thank you for joining me. I'm Laura Mize, pediatric speech language pathologist, and you've just watched teachmetotalk.com's Therapy Tip of the Week.